This video is made possible by Skillshare. Start learning anything for free for two months at skl.sh slash reallifelore16. Nature is still the queen of our planet, and one of the greatest displays of her raw power can be found in the form of hurricanes. These huge and often disastrous storms are a well-known fact of life to sailors and coastal communities the world over. But these storms are called different things depending on where you are. In the Atlantic and Northeastern Pacific, they are hurricanes. In the northwestern Pacific, they are typhoons, while in the South Pacific and Indian Oceans, they are known as cyclones. Whatever name they go by, they're nothing to take lightly. But how large and how powerful can these storms actually get? Let's start by explaining the Saffir-Simpson scale, which you've probably already seen used. It measures hurricanes on a scale between Category 1 on the low end and Category 5 on the high end. To help you visualize what each level of the scale means, let's begin with the smallest known cyclone cyclone ever on record, Tropical Storm Marco. To be classified as a Category 1 hurricane, a storm needs to have wind speeds of at least 74 miles per hour. And so since Marco only had a maximum speed of 65 miles per hour, it wouldn't even register on the scale. The storm was about the same size as Rhode Island, and the damage it caused when it impacted Mexico was minimal. But obviously, actual hurricanes can get much nastier than this. Even on the low end at a Category 1 storm, Hurricane Nate in 2017 became the costliest natural disaster in the history of Costa Rica, causing $787 million in damage and claiming the lives of 48 people. A Category 1 storm has wind speeds ranging between 74 and 95 miles per hour, and Nate's max speed at 90 miles per hour easily made it make the mark. But the further up the scale we go, the more ferocious the wind speeds become. At Category 2, a hurricane must have wind speeds between 96 and 110 miles per hour, this is fast enough to damage roofs and windows of homes, uproot some trees, and destroy mobile homes. Hurricane Arthur is a recent example of this type, which grew to about the size of Montenegro. Once we reach Category 3, these and all further storms are considered to be major hurricanes. To be considered a Category 3, a storm needs to have wind speeds between 111 and 129 miles per hour. Even the most well-built homes or office buildings can suffer minor damage against this, while buildings without a solid foundation will probably be totally destroyed. Hurricane Otto in 2016 was a good example of this type, which grew to have a max wind speed of 115 miles per hour and became close in size to the Netherlands. Hurricanes start getting extremely terrifying when they reach Category 4, though. The deadliest natural disaster in all of American history was because of a Category 4 hurricane that struck the city of Galveston in 1900, with wind speeds approaching 100 45 miles per hour, the hurricane basically destroyed the entire city and left somewhere between 6,000 and 12,000 people dead. But that's nowhere near the deadliest cyclone in world history. That unfortunate honor goes to the 1970 Bola cyclone that smashed into a place that used to be called East Pakistan, and now it's called Bangladesh. The storm was about the size of Albania and claimed the lives of over 500,000 people. More than all American fatalities during the Second World War combined. Another horrible record set by a Category 4 hurricane was by Harvey in 2017. Approaching the size of Hungary, it slammed into the coast of Texas in 2017 and became the costliest hurricane in history, causing over $125 billion in damage, which is also close to Hungary's total GDP. So you could maybe call Harvey a hungry missile. But that missile's record is technically tied with an even more ferocious storm back from 2005. Katrina, which became a monster close in size to Poland with wind speeds of 175 miles per hour. It also caused $125 billion in damage and claimed the lives of over a thousand people when it struck the southern U.S. This is our first Category 5 hurricane, but there are many more that have been significantly bigger. As it stands now, as of the making of this video, Hurricane Florence has not yet made landfall in the Carolinas, but it's looking like a true monster that's approaching the size of France. Hurricane Patricia back in 1979 grew to about the size of the 
the entire Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal combined, and clocked in the highest wind speed ever measured in a hurricane at a demonically fast 215 miles per hour. That's fast enough to probably destroy most buildings it would ever come across. But there still are a few that have grown even bigger. While not as ferociously fast, Hurricane John was considerably bigger in size, nearly the same as Iran. John holds the record for being the longest lasting hurricane at 31 days and the furthest distance traveled by one, 11,530 kilometers, or about 29% of the way around the entire planet. Only a tiny handful of hurricanes have ever been bigger than this, but one of them was Sandy, which became the biggest hurricane to ever strike the US. It was about half the size of Australia, which looks horrific on a map by the east coast. But with a wind speed of only 115 miles per hour, it was actually classified as just a category 3 storm, so the damage it caused wasn't as bad as it could have been if it had been upgraded. But by far the biggest and most terrifying storm our planet is known to have ever experienced was Typhoon Tip back in 1979. Growing in the northwestern Pacific, Tip reached a size comparable to the entire country of India, and maintained wind speeds of 190 miles per hour. Thankfully, Tip weakened before it eventually hit Japan, but imagine the damage it could have caused if it had hit somewhere at its peak strength. If the Hungary missile caused $125 billion of damage in Texas, imagine what an India missile could have done to Japan. But worst of all, hurricanes are probably going to get bigger later during this century because of global warming. The warmer that ocean water gets, the stronger that a hurricane's winds can become. NOAA estimates that because of climate change, hurricane intensity will increase 2 to 11 percent by 2100, which doesn't sound like a lot until you remember that 2 to 11 percent of winds speeds close to 200 miles per hour is close to 4 to 22 additional miles per hour, which is fast enough over a speed limit to get you a ticket pretty much anywhere. Speed is important, or at least the illusion of it is. Before I started this YouTube channel, I created a feature-length movie over a summer, but I really had no idea what I was doing. If you're trying to do something similar right now, like filming your own movie, videos for YouTube, or any other cinematic project, then there's no better place to learn what you're doing than over at Skillshare. While learning from their classes on aerial videography or filming scene transitions is incredibly useful, Skillshare, of course, has many other interesting classes as well on topics like data science, programming, and animation. In fact, Skillshare has over 20,000 classes, so if there's something you want to learn, then Skillshare probably has a class on it. Best of all, you can start learning with Skillshare for free for two entire months and support real-life lore by signing up today by clicking the link in the description at skl.sh slash reallifelore16. 